Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to OzCastNetwork.com for details. This season of Negative Camber the Motorsport Show is proudly brought to you by True Steel Frames, Move Yourself Trailer Hire, Red Mill Bakery, Pro Karts Race Centre Paraka, Barberino, TD Racing, T4, Patrizzi Course, IKD, DR Karts Australia and Radio Italia Uno. Ultima notizia a più tardi. Addolcisci la tua giornata con Radio Italia 1. It's lights out and away we go. Russell does get away well, as does Max Verstappen. And Valtteri Bottas has got his teammate right alongside him already. Welcome to Negative Camber. No! If it's motorsport you want, then this is the place to be. All of the latest results, analysis and interviews. And a great start for car number 11. Delberto's got away beautifully at the start of the great race. Proudly sponsored by True Steel Frames a leading supply, service and manufacturer of steel frames and roof trusses. Down the inside, Hamilton sees it coming. It's a late lunch by Verstappen who takes the lead of the race. Right now on Radio Italia Uno 87.6. And now it's time to introduce your hosts, Jamie Lemieux and Lee Harrison. Hello everyone and welcome to Negative Camber, the motorsport show, proudly brought to you by True Steel Frames, Mr. Lee Harrison. Jamie Lemire back here after my little temporary hiatus after the flu got the better of me and the reason why I shouted Lee out is because he forgot to mention True Steel Frames through all of episode 49. Just so much to do when you're doing it all, like running the show, the panelling, all of it. There was just too many things going on all at once. Uh, well, introduce yourself first with your theme music and then we'll talk about... Have anything else that we want to talk about? Go for it. The Dark Lord has returned. Yeah, I've, uh, yep, gone with the wrong uh, intro music. Though. Oh, my God. <laughs> my God. Can I just say, first of all, happy 50th episode. We've hit the half century as of today. I cannot believe it that this is number 50. From humble beginnings in the uh, in the lounge room or kitchen at your place to uh, where we are now, it's uh, it's come a long way. I know. The two of us by ourselves in the studio here at Radio Taliuno, it's it's a very intimate setting. I like it. Absolutely. I like it. Who would have thought? And like to be running the radio studio by ourselves, our you know, wise and fearless leader who... Is uh, has abandoned us and left us the keys to the shop. Um, although one one person forgot his keys to the shop tonight, it seems. Yes, you can never trust the man that doesn't tie up his own shoelaces. Known <laughs> as the general manager is Mark Aston. Hey guys, great to catch up. Yeah. Right, hello, Mark. How are <laughs> you? You from Key City? Hey? Yes, yes. We'll we'll blame the man on. You know what? He's found a new love. That's why. That's why he's forgotten his keys. I mean, any man that decides to travel to Melbourne to come back to get himself a new car, that pops and crackles more than what Lee does, which is quite a lot. Yeah. Mate, congratulations. Yeah, like uh, a pretty big uh, dream car of mine achieved. Um, so, yeah, I've been been wanting wanting one for a little while now uh, and, and yeah, finally made it, made it happen. It was a nice drive back from Melbourne uh, yesterday, uh, get myself acquainted with it. It was a very... Very, it's I said to Shay today, it's probably the most uh stressful drive and mentally exhausting drive that I've ever had back from uh from interstate because yeah, I I, I didn't want to hit a pothole because it's not the kind of car that you are um, yeah, it's not made for cross country driving, that's for sure. My question is to you is this, um, did you cry more? when you picked up the car or when you saw Mademoiselle Thaya walking down the aisle? Uh, probably the car. <sighs> it was nice knowing you, man. You've gone from hairy lip to now the car more than the wife walking down the aisle. Nah, it's, she, she, I'm sure she understands. It's, uh, oh, no. it's been a bit of a dream for, dream for me to, to have a, a Volkswagen Golf R, so now that I've made it a reality, um, yeah, it, it, was, it was pretty surreal. And then I get to drive it home for, I think, 12 hours. And what sort of put the icing on the cake with that driving home as well is that um, on the way home, I, I went through Heathcote Park Raceway, which is just out of Seymour in, in Victoria there, um, as a friend from, from the Middle East had flown back uh, or flown to uh, Melbourne to do a, a drag race and help out. So... 
not only did I pick up my car uh, and drive that home, but on the way home, I also picked up my long-lost luggage from the depths of the Middle East. <laughs> as <laughs> Old mate was more than happy to bring it over for me, um, and, he, and yeah, packed it all up and, and brought my stuff back from the Middle East. Oh, my God. What, what was it? Like everything. I'm talking like I've literally had to do seven loads of washing today because I brought like all of my clothes came back. I, I, <laughs> so when I moved, obviously I moved to the Middle East for the first time where, when I went overseas. I was I planned to go for three years. So I had set myself up like everything I owned was in the Middle East. I came home for a 10-day holiday and that's all I brought home with me in terms of clothes. So over time since then i've obviously restacked my wardrobe a little bit but yeah there was all like literally all my clothes <laughs> wow. all, all of my old race gear so i've got a now i've got my own piece suit back i've got my old helmet back my gloves my, my wet weather stuff like everything has come back my, my my old helmet which i'm going to send straight down to my dad and get him to do a, a paint job on it it's going to be a wet weather helmet um but yeah like just everything has come back my trusty first edition ipod um that's got like the the whole discography of my life uh in it so yeah yeah it's been a pretty surreal couple of days that's that uh, ipod must be a museum piece right now this amount of i mean do they still make iPods now? Not not that kind. No. No. no, oh, no. So God. um yeah, like it's 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 been beat up. Like it's had a it's had a life. Um as as many of our friends would know that it used to be the the pre hype up iPod, like every time before we'd go to town and all that jazz it would, it would oh. be getting a workout and then uh, yeah, it used to get thrown around at the track a fair bit, but yeah, no, it's uh, it's come back, and and I can't wait to start diving into some of the old playlists that are on there because oh, it's going to be like a, a time warp. Oh wow! Speaking of time warp, um, firstly, I need to do a big shout out to Biscuits for a couple of things. First of all, for filling in my shoes for uh, a fortnight ago, very much appreciated. Secondly, for him and also my cousin Nick for suggesting that we interview JP which has gone down in negative camber history as probably the most popular, talked about, and greatest episode we have probably ever, ever recorded, mainly for the downloads but also for the reviews and feedback that we've been getting uh, from our listeners, which has been unprecedented. Yeah. In fact, I was actually at the racetrack today. <gasps> I know. And, <laughs> Hang um, on a minute. You, you weren't well two weeks ago, and obviously you're still not feeling well if you're at the racetrack. Iron Man Lemura, they call me, mate. Yeah. I've got a, I've got a, sure. <laughs> Iron Man Lemura, they call me. Yeah, yeah. I have about a dozen drops in the eye and uh, recovered from my flu, and I was out on the track today, mate. I've pulled up like an absolute rock star. I don't, I don't believe you. <sighs> now, did, did settle the argument? Did your micron work? Didn't use it. No. Oh. There you go. Why would you want to use a Micron when they've done a track revamp and there's not one single magnetic strip on that track? Oh, see, I, I, I don't. I told you that they didn't put the magnetic strips in, but I'm not 100 percent sure that that is fully correct. No, it's I, confirmed. I don't think that they did though. It is confirmed. Yeah, no, there you go. Yes, don't worry. Apparently, I'm the only one that actually complains about it, but I call. Well, you're probably the only one that's still got a Micron for. That's all right. That's all right. We can't use them anyway. Well, so. <laughs> I, know, I know a good go-kart shop if you want to buy a Micron 5. Oh, God. But it was actually, you know what? It was good just to get out there and do some laps and um, look at the revised um, layout of Southerns, which is a, well, pretty much what it used to be like, but a slightly reconfigured Wakefield, yeah. which you have to get used to a little bit. Um, but the rain that we'd had over the course of the week really washed any rubber that was on that track, so it was almost like having to lay it all down again. But, yeah, um, yeah we, we found a couple of little setup tweaks that um, which improve the card as the day goes on, and I kind of wish I'd ran that sort of setup when we raced at Festival Stay Cup three months ago. Um, it's hard to hard to say with the setup stuff, and that's why we're not doing a whole bunch of testing out at Bolivar at the moment because... The track changes so much, like with the way the weather is at the moment, it was washing all the rubber away. Like we can find, you know, nearly seconds in in the course of the day just because people are driving around it. So it's 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 pretty tricky with the uh, with the new bitumen. Mm. I did actually get to see a couple of the historic go karts at route today. They were being pushed pushed out of life by the little four stroke yep. uh, buggy thing. That was really cool. Yeah. Um, but man, they were going hard. Like you know, a couple of them were running new motors in and stuff like that. So JK has been busy because I was sporting some JK tuning stickers. So yep. Um, yep. Well, that's good. It was just good to you know just get back out on the track and get some time in the seat. Yep. So, yeah, I'm feeling. I think we're going out to the track uh, next weekend with Nick and myself and possibly Cody as well. So 
try and finally put some laps down on on this Goldfinger, um, ah, Goldfinger, Goldfinger Sprint Master, and uh, get some laps in for Cody as well. But uh, it's been a big clean up since the City of Adelaide. Um, yeah, we've I've finally been managed to find enough time to strip Cody's go karts back and, and give them a clean and, and get them set up ready to go again. Word on the street is that Mr. Nick Caravas, the Oracle, is making his racing return in four-stroke in Moala. True or false? Uh, pending neck. Pending pending a few things, yeah. Yeah. But yep. otherwise, the, that is the intention. Yep. What are you going to do? Because he's like your spanner man. All your magic powers are gone. I'll be ready by then. It's fine. Ah, uh, right, okay. That okay. go-kart that he'll be driving is already set up because we've done so much work on it. All he's going to have to do is just jump in it and drive it, and they'll struggle to catch him. Is that your old one? Yeah. Ah, uh, right, okay. Yep. yep. So then we'll just do some work on on the new one. Uh, but, but by the end of next weekend, we should be we should be pretty well all over it, and there won't be too many things to change. So... Yeah, no, it's, it's uh, it should be pretty good. It'd be pretty cool um, have, having two carts up there and, and racing alongside each other. We did try and lease it out to a couple of people just to see if they uh, wanted to have a go, um, but yeah, it wasn't uh, wasn't taken up. So hopefully, we can make some people regret their decisions on, on not taking up the, the Sprint Master seat. Oh, look at you, make some people regret their decisions. <laughs> <laughs> you are literally as light as air. Look, you've just come in, just racing into the studio with this brand new car. It is beautiful, I must say. Yeah, I must say. I pretty, like the paint scheme. Though. Yeah, That's pretty cool. It's not paint. It's vinyl wrap. <laughs> oh, same thing. It's painted somehow on vinyl or whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Looks cool, though. I yeah, like no, it. It does. And uh, we went for a bit of a... As soon as I drove in the driveway last night, the, uh, the all the girls came rushing out. So we went for a little a little cruise around the block and, and made some noises. And uh, oh, did you? Now? Yes. Uh-huh. And then and then uh, yeah, we, we took it for a drive up to McLaren Vale this afternoon for for some lunch. So yeah, took it on some on some open roads and and windy windy hills for the kids and and yeah, showed them what a car can do. I was actually going to ask about the baby seats, and I realised that the girls are much older than that, so yeah. that you don't need that anymore. Sorry. No, Sorry, kids. No baby seats required here. Um, it's, uh, yeah. It, well, there was a baby seat in it when I picked it up because uh, Andrew, who I bought it from, he's, he's got a newborn um, and he's been ferrying, ferrying his son around in, in the Gulf and uh, they went for one last drive in it before he got rid of it because, yeah, you know, they hit three kids in, and his wife and him in the Volkswagen Golf didn't quite cut it anymore. So he's, he's on to bigger and, and, and other things. But, yeah, he had to have a, have a last moment of peace with the Gulf because, yeah, like... It's pretty clean. Like I took it. Yeah, it looked pretty good. Yeah, I took it and got it detailed this morning, and uh, it, it's come up pretty good. Like, there's a few little bits on the on the vinyl wrap, wear and tear marks on the vinyl wrap, but if you're not really looking for them, you won't notice them. So yeah, I'm pretty pretty stoked, and uh, yeah, look sounds forward. like you slept in it too. You may as well have. No, I'm, uh, yeah, should've, <laughs> I should have. Although Shay did just call me a liar because uh, apparently I was crying before she even got to the venue when I was marrying her but uh oh, i God. thought she'd forgotten that why have i opened up a can of worms <laughs> dear oh dear let's go to a break before i cause more trouble you're listening to negative camber sponsored by true steel frames providing steel frames and roof trusses for any size projects true steel frames.com.au Welcome back to Negative Camber, the motorsport show, proudly brought to you by True Steel Frames and proud supporters of the Scuderia Ferrari Club of Adelaide. Episode 50, mate, 50, big milestone, big milestone. Can I say, um, well done on last fortnight, manning the ship. Yep. I was actually listening to it on the car, finally got around to actually sit down and listen to it again. And um, I got to say that I really actually liked your idea for the city of Adelaide in terms of that in uh, the four stroke, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, Ab- well, you were there, yeah. So let, let's let's drill down because I've spoken to you in about you know about two all weeks, this sort of, yeah. in two weeks. So, what was it like? You know, I saw the results and stuff like that, and I'm thinking, <sighs> marquee class, and it was you know a bit of a ball fest to be honest. Um, Yep, unfortunately there was no room for us as mechanics or anything to get bored. Um, the lack of classes um, meant that, and, and us running two classes meant that you were just flat out on it the whole time. Um, so yeah, that made things sort of difficult uh, running running both carts. But um, but yeah, it was it, at least the day went went quick. I suppose exciting racing. Um, 
yeah, like KA three, the senior class was was exciting for for a little while, and then with the sort of about five to six laps to go, it sort of fizzled out into into what the result was with Jacob sort of stretching the lead and, and running away with it a little bit. Um, but yeah, tricky conditions as well. Like it was raining for most of the morning and then dried up after lunch. Yep. Um, so yeah, that made that made things pretty difficult. But uh, but yeah, like yeah, look. We all know my thoughts on the situation. We all know that I think that the the exclusion of of a four stroke category um, was was unwarranted, and that we probably could have done some more fun stuff with that, and probably promoted it better. And uh, even if we just had one four stroke class with everybody on track at the same time, um, competing with wherever you qualified, like there wasn't even a lights, mediums, the heavies. It was just a it was just a race. Um, I think that probably would have been more exciting to watch than than probably ninety percent of the other class races. Well, I was actually doing some thinking because I liked the idea of the enduro and I kind of think, well, originally they wanted to stretch the race to two days. So why not run practice sessions on the Friday for a two-hour enduro for four-stroke and – well, sorry, on the Saturday. Run like like the proper format with all the other classes and all that sort of stuff. So like what we did for enduro runs, enduro one, so you've got your – rather than the races, the the, sort of the heat – are your qualifying time, your fastest yep. average qualifying time forms the grid. And then the final race of the day on the city of Adelaide on the Sunday, two hour enduro, bang, done. Yeah, like it would have been a good way to a good way to, you know, knock things off. It would have given some of those other guys something else to do. Like, yeah, some of the two stroke guys would have jumped in and had a go at the four stroke enduro and whatever. But uh, I think, you know, look, there's still potential that there's gonna be a four stroke enduro later in the year mixed in with one of the other race meetings. Um but yeah, just just seemed like a bit of a fizzler of a meeting unfortunately um and like i said i can understand they wanted it to be prestigious but it's the wrong time of year and uh yeah just it didn't it didn't work so hopefully there is in the background some discussions happening and uh yeah if not i'm sure lots of people know my phone number and and, uh willing i'm willing to have that phone call if they want to take my suggestions and, and use them a bit more seriously yeah um Newcastle, have you heard much about it from the AKC side of it? I heard there was some more rough and tumble in terms of driving standards and stuff like that, but I don't, haven't heard too much about it. No, I was uh, I was pretty busy all Newcastle weekend, so um, didn't didn't really hear very much of it. I was really focused in on on like watching the results for for the Cadet Nine class with young Carter Grother um, flying the Soddy Soddy banner. Um, so he he did really well, finishing second. Um, he led every lap of the final and then just sort of all but rolled the red carpet out on the last corner um, and, and let Brock Nolan go through. So it was kudos to, to little Rocky for um, for taking the win. But, um, yeah, yeah, it would have been good to see that Soddy take the, take the win. Um, and then I know there was lots of drop-down bump penalties, like Myron Kremers won the won the final for KZ, um, but got a, a, a grid position or position penalty for a drop-down. And, uh, yeah, there was just yeah, a bit of bit of chaoticness again. Um, standard, same as, same as all the driving's been, really. Unbelievable. Uh, it's, um, you know, to have Kremers there racing is, is pretty cool, but then to get done for a drop-down bumper is, is a bit of a tragedy. Yeah, but, but they get them in Europe as well. So, And yeah. to be fair, if, if it was... The, if the drop-down that came from the incident that I have seen, um, then, you know, it probably warranted um, that you that you lost some time for it, like at least have a, have a penalty for that. So, yeah... Um, yet we'll, we'll probably not go to Ipswich either um it's a long drive uh for for where we are in the championship especially now after missing Newcastle but I think we're looking at doing the uh the city of Melbourne in August and then uh heading in that's the shakedown for the for the national round and then and end, end of August we'll go to uh, Todd Road again for the for the national round yep yep so that's and that's it that AKC's done end of August AKC's done end of August yeah wow Wow. So final, final, like they finish the race meeting on the on the Sunday, and then everyone's off to the gala dinner Sunday night, and and that's that's everything. Yeah, I'll be at a gala dinner in August as well. Yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. What when's the gala dinner for AKC? Oh, like whatever the Sunday, the last Sunday of August is, like the twenty sixth or something. Mm, okay, I'll have to make sure then that we don't have a show, unless you want to do it live from the the gala. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Zoom call or something. Maybe yeah. we'll get Mademoiselle Thayer across to the microphone too. She loves podcast too. Chief of Hype can come in here and panel Chief the show. Of hype. You should be able to do the panelling by then, though. Like, Potentially. It's almost your turn to sit behind the desk. Well, every time I've been planning on something, it's always happened. Either yeah. I turn sick or, you know, Mr. Rayston, the shoeless wonder, is um, you know, is off doing other stuff. And yeah. it's just been one obstacle after another. 
I've got my eyesight back. I've got my health back. So it's not, I'm well, getting all the rich and famous for you. Oh, please, please. <laughs> But um, mate, I feel great. I've come back from this track today, and I feel like I could do another another session, man. That's... How many laps did you do? Well, I was on track at nine, and I came off the track at three, and I reckon I probably did close to about seventy laps minimum. Which, for someone that hasn't driven his go that type of go kart since March, it's probably not a bad effort. Yeah, yeah, that's not not a bad effort. No sore forearms. My shoulders feel good. Yeah, you know, so I feel great. Well, all that all that health work you've been doing in the background, and the training, and tennis, and cycling, and all the rest of it—it's starting wait. to pay off. Yeah, I know, I know. But um, I was this close, this close to um, having a crack at a tag one two five today. For those that can't uh, see Jamie with his fingers, he was about five millimeters away from having a crack in a one two five. Yeah, today. Steve Skinner was, um, and I had been sort of in discussions. He was going to let me have a drive of his arrow. And I thought, whoa, oh, tempting, but I was going to run out of time. And I thought, no, nah, you know what, Steve? I've had a whole day at track. I don't want to wrap your, I don't want to wrap your go kart around in a sand pit or something like that. His brother did that for him instead. <laughs> this, this sounds like pretty poor excuse making to me. No, 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 no. Because you know what? When when I want to come on out on track, I'm going to like center mode. I want to get out there and, and poo my pants temporarily. <laughs> when I first drive the two stroke, give me a whole day to kind of get come to terms with it yeah. and then maybe by the end of the day I might be able to go half throttle around the last See, corner. See, what you should have done was done half the day in the in the four-stroke, then jumped in his go-kart to do a session and then gone back to your four-stroke and you would have realised just how much easier the four-stroke is to drive, how much more time you've got to think about things and do things. That was actually good fun to get the, get the, get the guys out there, the team out there and we cut some laps, not even worry about time because I'd you know, never dashboard, it was more by fuel. Yeah. And just try and, you know, get some, some mileage in was really good. So, uh, yeah, I'll be back on track personally at Monado for the Festival State Cup, I think, mid-July. And then... Mid-July? Uh, Mid-July, uh... I think. If I know my dates, I think my dates are correct. I know Southern's is the end of July. Um, and then Moyala is at the beginning of July, if yeah. I remember correctly. That sounds a little bit too close for Festival State Cup rounds to be together. I reckon mm. it's uh, somewhere Maybe. in August is the Festival State Cup in... Mm, okay. Well, my brother's going to be at Wyala, yeah. so at least one of us will be well, there. I don't know why you're not coming to Wyala. Hey? Why aren't you coming to Wyala? Oh, no, because I'll be in Sydney in August, so I just need to build up my brownie points again. No, not good enough. Happy wife, happy life, mate. Not committed. Yep. I'll be I'll be in uh, in Wyala, so, you know, hopefully the it doesn't match up with the show, because otherwise you're going to have to do it with me on the radio, on the on the telephone. Just give me the golf for, for the day. I'll just yeah. keep it in the garage there, mate. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. See, I cried when my wife... Walk down the aisle, yeah. so it didn't matter what car came before it. You, on the other hand, uh, yeah. Although you know, we'll see. Combination of uh, of lifelong dreams happening right now. So you know, it's a bit well, emotional. mate. You know what? Kudos to you because that's pretty cool. You know, to live that dream, to have the dream car, yep. is is not a bad effort. Wait till you hear it drive off on you tonight. It's going to yeah. be. <laughs> Well, anything beats the Barina. <laughs> Let's face it. Let's face it. But the only thing that I can't do in the in the in the Volkswagen is uh, is grind gears because there's no no clutch in it, so I'm a bit disappointed. You'll I can't find, take the Mickey out of myself. You'll find the way with your track record, mate. <laughs> Don't you worry about that. Well, we'll have to call it Herbie. Yeah, we'll have to. Yeah. Are you going to put like a blue and white pinstripe across the top? No, 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 that won't be happening. You got any more plans for it? Yeah, I've been. Tr- uh, so it's got some little like uh, mint green trimming and stuff on on the body kit, um, and so I want to get rid of that and turn take that and put it fluoro orange. Um, Whereabouts on the body was that? Yeah, you'll see it later. Now, oh, okay. now that I've said it, you'll see it. But it's like it's so subtle that when you see it, it pops and it makes it looks awesome. Yep. Um, but it's not overwhelming. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that that's probably going to get taken off, and I'll put some uh, some fluoro orange and and stuff on that, and uh, and then yeah, I'll put my own custom number plates on it. Hopefully, uh, try and find something that I like. Um, and then that's all that's earmarked right now. Why do I get the feeling you have Harry? Nah, I've already been thinking of, of a few things, and Harry Harry didn't make the list. So, okay. Yeah. Shay Renee? Yeah, I'm going to name put my wife's name on the car. I've got a line that I could really use right now. <laughs> we are a G-rated show, so i best be... Yeah, otherwise, they'll kick us off air. So okay. I'm surprised they've left us on air for this long, to be fair. 50 episodes, not bad. Yeah. Not bad at all. Um, what was I going to say? Um, well done on Cottrell too, by the way. Um, he, I know he's keen to come back. Well, he's just messaged me and asked me uh, for some stats. You know, you're bigging up the JP Drake episode. So I think Cottrell's going to have a few downloads. It got more shares and stuff around the place. Um, but you know, a likable lad like Cottrell's has not got the sort of social profile behind him as JP. 
Mr. Cottrell, <clears throat> hate to let you down, but no, JP did come up trumps. Yeah. Um, so mind you, to be fair, it was a week late for when the episode came out. So it was well on the way to getting a minute. Well, I can't even remember the number, but yeah, JP was is different kettle of fish. Yeah. You were so slack with releasing the last one. I'm pretty well, upset. It's because I had to wait for the GM to send me the file because <laughs> you didn't know how to do it. No, that's fair. Yeah. So all good. All good. What's been happening else? Uh, oh, I am currently watching the timing of the Le Mans 24 hour. And just to let you know, ladies and gents, right now we are on lap 276. There is exactly four hours remaining and Ferrari is now only up by four seconds in the race. So that lead has been fluctuating by quite significant. But Ferrari is first, Toyota second, Cadillac third. Yep. So uh, I'm... And the Garage 56 NASCAR entry is doing really well in GTM as well. Yeah, they where is that? They were in the top three uh, last time I checked, and they yeah. had led the race for, for a long period of time as well, but they've got a longer... they For when they stop to do their brake pads and, mm-hmm. and they change their brakes, theirs is like five minutes versus everybody else's like minute and a half. Uh-huh. So they lose a lap every time they've got to change brakes. Yeah. Ah, okay, so we've just had a pit stop. That's why the gap's closed, because now James Collado is behind the wheel. But I'm going to call it now. <laughs> oh, you are a very game man. Oh, well. Nothing else has gone right for Squadra, uh, for the Ferrari this year. I'm going to call it now, Ferrari are going to win Le Mans. They are doing everything they can to throw this race away for themselves. Blah, they put blah, themselves, blah. they were leading by like over a minute, put themselves in the gravel. They were leading again by like 35 seconds and then they had a, a faulty pit stop because the guy couldn't turn on the isolator switch or whatever. Oh man, They're, it doesn't... The the strategy calls just don't uh, don't singular themselves to the uh, the the Formula One team. We we don't win Formula One races this year because Red Bull will probably win every single race. We are gonna win the one hundredth Le Mans. Okay. What a comeback! Fifty <laughs> years comeback. So I'll have the Peco show. I'll have Le Mans twenty four hour. Uh, it's gonna be bliss. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. There's still four hours to go. You know it's gonna happen. 11 o'clock tonight, I'm going to get a message from you with like laughter and tears, and you're going to show me this video footage of... Oh, you'll don't. get two, because you'll get one for tonight at the at the Mugello round of, of MotoGP when Peko falls off like he normally does, and then you'll get another one when with one, one lap to go or something, like on the slow lap where the race is already declared, the Ferrari breaks down, and they, they don't get to cross the line. Don't, no, because <laughs> you know what? It's probably going to happen. <laughs> It's probably going to happen. I'm, and I'll just like, I'll be, uh, yeah, no, I'll, no, no, no. We're going to win Le Mans and Pecco's going to win Mugello and it, all is right in the world. I guarantee it. So we'll be off to a break. And when we come back, we've got some motor racing that we need to start talking about. So we're going to talk about Monaco. We're going to talk about the Spanish Grand Prix. We're going to go around the world. We'll give our listeners regular Le Mans updates. And then it's probably about it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll take that break then. We'll take that break then. We'll come back. You're listening to Negative Camber, sponsored by True Steel Frames, providing steel frames and roof trusses for any size projects. TrueSteelFrames.com.au Welcome back to Negative Camber, the motorsport show, proudly brought to you by True Steel Frames and proud supporters of the Scuderia Ferrari Club of Adelaide. Let's talk Formula One. And there's been, well, there should have been three races, really. We had two, and both were boring. <laughs> what are you doing, producer? I got no idea what, what just happened there. Uh, that yeah. was not me. Yeah, see what happens. <laughs> Bloody, GM leaves the studio, everything falls apart. But that's okay. Nothing the edit button can't change. Um, all right, so Monaco, Verstappen first, Alonso second, Ocon third, Lewis Hamilton fourth, George Russell fifth, Charles Leclerc sixth, Pierre Gasly seventh, Carlos Sainz eighth, and Lando Norris ninth, and Oscar Piastri rounding out the top ten. Plenty of talking points. Uh, yeah, now, look, oh, before we got interrupted by this controllable board over here, I was going to say, you said that the, both the races were boring. I disagree with Monaco. I think that race really came alive at the end of the race with a bit of moisture and precipitation falling. From second place down. Yeah, well, even like like Max was super lucky to finish the race. Like George pulled out of uh, out of that runoff area and straight into the side of or Max drove straight into the side of him. Like that was that was super lucky that a wing didn't break or the left front didn't break or you know that was near, that could have been a write off for Max right there. 
I wish it was. I, I mean, look, look, in all honesty, <laughs> like I probably wish it was too, but uh, but in the end it wasn't. Well, I mean, one of the talking points I've written down here was Verstappen, Alonso and Ocon probably showed the most Monaco magic out of the whole field, yeah. really. But And that was really highlighted by the qualifying session on Saturday. That's probably go down as one of the best qualifying sessions I've seen in the last decade. Yeah, well, we talked about it on the show when you weren't here, and uh, yeah, it was like the amount that Max found in those last two to three corners was absolutely phenomenal. Like, to, to have not let Fernando take that pole position, um, that probably set the whole scene up for, for Sunday, as we saw, and... Uh, you know that's sort of the pressure that uh, that Sergio was feeling as well, and that's why he ended up binned in in the turn one wall uh, very early on in the session in qualifying. So it uh, it shows that Monaco deserves its place on the tr- on the on the calendar just for that whole Saturday anticipation. Yep, yep. I mean, people complain about the fact that the racing is sterile. Is that Monaco's been like that for decades? Yeah, you know, like. At the end of the day, you've got cars that are one and a half to two metres wide on a track that's probably not that much wider. Yeah. What were they well, expecting? It's not that they're that wide. It's that they're six metres long. Mm. Like they're, It's like driving a bus around the track. Like, yeah, you're not going to you're not going to make Monaco interesting without drastically changing parts of the track. And then you lose the prestige of that event anyway. Um, oh, there's that key word, <laughs> prestige. Um, so, yeah, like, you know, there's a lot of work for Formula One to do before they're going to get exciting racing at Monaco, and it's not going to happen in the next 10, 15 years. It's more the, like the, it's only when you get like the helmet cams and all that sort of stuff when you actually truly appreciate just how tough that track is. Yeah. But also, that for two hours minimum, you've got to concentrate like you've never con- been able to concentrate before. I mean, I so, did it on the way home in my golf, not hitting any potholes. So, uh, I mean, and I did this for like 10 hours. So, well, these blokes get it easy. Oh, God. <laughs> God. Anyway, but no. But I, what I actually did like about this year's Monaco Grand Prix was the the broadcast. Formula One TV yes. took the broadcast in house and took it away uh, from the Monaco uh, Sporting Commission or whatever their name is um, that they have generally held the rights to produce the vision that then Formula One shares to the world. So Formula mm. One took that under their wing this year due to like a lot of people saying that the. The angles and the comments, uh, the the angles for some of the sections didn't really suit the Formula One broadcast. So, mm. yeah, I think like coming over the top of Casino where they had those cameras stationed out on those balconies, like that really gave you a bit of a, an appetite for what driving around that track looks like. And then again from St. Devot pointing straight up the hill, like you can see how quickly those cars are moving up the hill. So I think like for people that are fresh, Ish, yep. like in the last sort of five years of coming into Formula One, if you're watching the broadcast from the last Monaco Grand Prix, you're gonna you're gonna see and, and appreciate more of the skill that it takes to manhandle one of those cars around there. Yeah, the the revised camera angles that they had at Beau Rivage, Massenet, Casino Square, like you're talking about, uh, swimming pool, yeah, as well, and then the apparently the um, the helicopter, yeah, uh, where they, you can they actually don't see normally to have the helicopter. No, no, because no, it was always. Um, was always pretty much the same. I mean, if you watch a race from 1991, 92, and then you watch the race up until like last year, the camera angles are pretty much exactly the same. Yeah, rinse and repeat. Yeah, pretty much, just different year. Yeah. You know, we'll go from standard definition to digital. You know, we're granular to, you know, you can see nose hairs. Whereas this year, and even Ted Kravitz in the telecast, I think on the Friday, was saying how it just looks absolutely amazing. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, but, but with all these new cameras, they still did miss multiple multiple occasions of awesome maneuvers especially uh, Oscar Piastri around the outside of I think it was Yuki Tsunoda around mm-hmm. Casino Square so look they've they've still not not foolproof and and yeah ballsy of Piastri to be making moves around the outside of, of Casino in in his first Formula 1 race in Monaco I uh, know I it's yeah I mean he drove to get 10th and you know given where they started from, and then obviously the rain had helped. It was a great drive. Yeah. Great. And a move like that, because I know the one that you speak of was pretty good. Yeah. For, like I said, for a rookie, it was amazing. Absolutely. Sergio Perez's title fight is a mirage. I'm calling it now. Uh, you know what? I, what are we in? We've got 23 races, or 21, or whatever it is now. Where, how many races into the season? Oh, I think we're at round eight. Max will win the title by around 15. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not looking good. Like, nah, like yeah, the per- the the pressure has definitely gotten to Perez, um, and and we're seeing that 
with with the qualifying mistake and then again i'm sure we'll touch on it at the at, when we recap barcelona as well in this episode but um but yeah more mistakes more mistakes lucky recovery drives are going okay but you don't want to be recovery driving your way to max verstappen no nah, not at all especially when you're driving well is it the same equipment you could say yes but um what i did find, find fascinating was when um with monaco how they've uh, when they were picking up Perez's car, and you could actually see the underneath of the floor. Yeah. Just how much more complex that floor is if you compare it to, say, the Williams, which we saw uh, from another view, I think it was, uh, was it Logan Sargent or Albon? Yeah, yeah. Logan. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it was well, just even compared to the Mercedes. Like you yeah. see them, we saw the Mercedes on, I think Friday, and at the end of practice, we were seeing the Mercedes being hoisted over the top of the buildings, and then, uh, and then, yeah, Saturday you see the the Red Bull, and you look. Know, in all honesty, I'm not surprised because mm. when you're talking ground effect cars, that's where all of the ground effect comes from. And when you're talking ground effect cars, you're talking Adrian Newey. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a bit of a work of art. Um, and I just hope that the the other teams they don't think that they can just map and trace that and, and copy it because it's it's not just what's happening underneath there. It's how that relates to what's happening on the top of the car as well. That's that's making the the Red Bull car so strong. Um, so you know, for instance, if Mercedes just geo mapped that and and took it and made their own floor let's mi- ma- uh, mirror the red bull one then it, it's not going to be their their silver bullet and, and fix all their issues as well i think a lot of the teams were looking at the ground effect cars of the 1980s where it was literally just a flat floor with a plank underneath and that was it because yep. that's what it looked like and then you see the red bull when it's just it's just lines and and shapes and swivels going everywhere it's yep. just ridiculous yeah, well, they were sort of trying to trap the air underneath the car in in the 1980s and stuff and now they're trying to flow the air at different speeds to bring it down to the ground so a few different uh, a few different theories and obviously the man with the the greatest plan at the moment is adrian newey and and that can be expected so yeah i was not very surprised at all when you see the complexity of that red bull floor yeah it was almost like a work of art yeah. it really was yeah. um there were rumors going around about hamilton and ferrari yeah. which was uh which was interesting to say the least because yeah. you kind of take a step back and say would who would who would they remove like you got Charles or Carlos <laughs> doesn't matter if you're getting Lewis Hamilton whichever one wants to be released from their contract first um whoever that <laughs> at the moment Charles and Science are probably going to race each other to the front door to go let me go uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're actually being complimentary about Lewis that is groundbreaking you are in love with this Volkswagen man you're a changed man <laughs> You're a change man. For 50 episodes, you pour hate on the man. Now all of a sudden you come back. No, I don't pour hate. I just said that his driving standards were not very good. That's all. Uh, anyway, I could actually see you getting Ferrari gear with if Lewis ever came to Ferrari. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> whoa, whoa, wha, whoa. Well, your whoa. NBA team's just about to get you know absolutely flogged in the NBA yeah, finals. Both, the- both my teams are, are not going so well. What was um, the other one? Panthers went down 3-1 today. Or, yeah, they lost the game 3-2, but they're down 3-1 in the series against the Vegas Golden Knights. And, and Miami are down 3-1 as well. So both my Miami teams have got some work to do. Dear, dear. In, well, at least they both made their finals, I suppose. So that's something not like Ferrari. Um, but hey, 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 we're still leading Le Mans, baby. Don't you worry about that. that Three the, hours, 45 uh, left to go. The bill at uh, damage bill at Aston could have taken a little bit of a beating in Monaco. I reckon, oh, wow. I reckon you would struggle to find an Armco or a piece of Armco that hasn't got Lance Stroll's <laughs> <laughs> bits of Lance Stroll's <laughs> Aston Martin stuck in it. Well, he speak- hit everything. Oh. The only thing he didn't hit was the pace car. Or his girlfriend, but that's another story. Um, and uh, <laughs> uh, wow, what did I do? Um, what did you make of this strategy call actually for Fernando? Would you have gone straight to intermediate, or would you have done the slick and then you know suck it and see, and then do the intermediate? Uh, look, you're probably in that position where you've got to you've got to try and throw the hail mary to to beat it to beat Max, mm. um, and if. If you don't try, then they really they didn't have anything to lose. They were going to finish second, or they were going to win the race. That was really there was no no risk of finishing third. Hmm. Um, so look, if you've got it, throw the hail mary and, and see what happens. And it could have been a, a masterstroke, and um, and yeah, they might have won the race. But unfortunately, that's that's not the way it went. Fernando is overly cheerful this year. Like I'm not used to seeing this cheerful Fernando. Yeah, but you'd be cheerful too if you were driving a good car and you were on the podium getting trophies and your teammates hitting True. everything that he can in his sight and <laughs> making the, the owner's son look a little bit special and uh yeah um 
I would I would have Pep in my step if I was Fernando right now. Everyone's been bagging on you for the last however many years saying decade, that you can't drive. Yeah. Then you go off and you win Le Mans, and then you come back, and now you get given a half decent car, and you and you're on the podium every weekend. Did he win it once or back to back? I can't remember. I think back to back. Back to back. Where okay. are you, biscuits? You're supposed to be listening, and you should be, be flat out telling me this already. It should be in my inbox. Yeah, and well, he's got Taylor Swift now apparently as well. Lewis nah. Hamilton might be a Shakira. No, nah, I think uh, unfortunately uh, Lando's missed uh, Lando. Fernando's missed out on uh, on Taylor Swift. He's with some basketball. She's with some basketball player. Oh, Austin Reeves Austin from Reeves. the LA Lakers. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm yeah. him. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, not on me. I'm like I'm not Austin Reeves, but that's what he says. Yeah. So um, if you follow the NBA, you'll know what I mean. But, I do. I do. Yes. Um, F1 TV we've covered, Beau Rivage we've covered, Monaco qualifying. Yeah, I think that's a wrap. And then we've got the Spanish Grand Prix. Yeah, yeah. we've got, uh, it's been plenty to catch up on. Mm, absolutely. Well, let's go to a break and then when we come back, we'll talk Spain. You're listening to Negative Camber, sponsored by True Steel Frames, providing steel frames and roof trusses for any size projects. TrueSteelFrames.com.au Welcome back to Negative Camber, the motorsport show, proudly brought to you by True Steel Frames and proud supporters of the Scuderia Ferrari Club Adelaide. It's Jamie Lemura here behind the mic, and with me is the man-child, sim-driving... Herbie owning wannabe sort of I don't know what he wanted to be when he was driving down Melbourne, Mr. Lee Harrison. Thanks, mate. Well, for that. Hey, no, don't thank me. Thank yeah. your wife. Oh, no, I was just <laughs> echoing, messages through. echoing the sentiments of my wife yeah. calling me a, man, a sim playing man child. I don't know what, why she thinks that's changed. Like I still like give me <laughs> give me an hour and a half to get get on the sim. I'm I'm, done, I'm jumping on that thing. If I didn't have you know seventy one loads of washing to do today after getting all my stuff back from Q eight, you'd better believe that sim would have got to work out mate after some of the sim stories i heard at the beginning of this week the fact that you've actually got your clothes back is probably a miracle in itself so it's um spanish f1 um yawn mate that's that was tedious unless tedious. you were sort of mid-pack then there was a little bit of action a little some, bit. some passing but um but yeah it was always going to be the how much is max going to win by show oh <laughs> I had I had a huge potential and promise at the end of qualifying when my man was on the front row. <laughs> no, no. So do you, do I, they, I, this is this is Ferrari for you though. They love to just build you up and then knock you down and then uh, pull the pull the red carpet out from underneath you. You know what? Right now, but, all uh, I care is Le Mans. That's yeah. all I care. <laughs> that's all I care about is Le Mans. Got, uh, got it cranked over there. Oh, I do absolutely. I've got the timing right in front of me, right next to me. I cut next three hours, man. <laughs> we, we're going to win Le Mans. Um, how about we run some highlights? Well, if there were highlights of the Spanish Grand Prix, then we'll come back and uh, and dissect. And Formula One is racing for the Spanish Grand Prix. It's going to be even immediately into the slipstream. Verstappen is holding the inside line. How brave is Carlos Sainz feeling? He's going wheel to wheel. Dare he go around the outside into turn one? He's run out of road. Hamilton is up to P3. Could get better. Contact. Lando Norris loses a bit of his front wing. George Russell was off the road in the background. Carlos Sainz got close. He did not get by. Hamilton up to P3. So, and then Sainz in second. Wheel to wheel goes the Aston Martin. Stroll trying to go around the outside. Disaster for Lando Norris. Yep, not a good getaway for him, but also not good for Sainz. They've gone all in with that softer tan. It hasn't worked. We go to the pit lane and we see Lando Norris in the McLaren having to fight his way back through. And they're waiting. They're holding him there. The brake's very, very hot. I just don't think that Lando expected Lewis to back out. But Lewis had to back out because of the Ferrari. That is Perez making light work into turn one of the Haas of Hulkenberg now up to ninth there's the late move go to the outside says Fernando Alonso George Russell says okay George Russell takes the place and the Mercedes on the attack same tyre for both of them well there you go what happened there the highlights weren't see that that's how bad the Spanish Grand Prix was the highlights only went for like a minute and a half wow Yep, that caught me off guard. Of course, all off guard. But there you go. That was the Grand Prix because you know what? It was about that point in the race where I literally <laughs> fell, fell asleep. asleep. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I woke up after and realised, oh, Max won by thirty seconds. Hey, well, there you go. Uh, top ten results. Max Verstappen. See, this is live radio, folks. This is what happens. Like you just got to be, you know, you got to be on it. You got to be on it. See, that's that's a Ferrari like 
uh, sort of stuff. We just hype you up and then boom, cut you off. But that's not going to stop us from winning Le Mans. I'm telling you now. Um, I'm putting, I'm manifesting this win, Lee. Like you do not understand. We've got nothing else going for us this year. If we win the centenary Le Mans in our first race back, man, we are, oh my God. I can hear you willing it into existence, but oh, I'm wishing you luck. Could you imagine Giov- Giovinazzi, like first year back, comes in, hypercar, bang, wins Le Mans. Look, come on. Look. Come on. There's still three hours to go. And they got the Peco show as well. It's great. <laughs> um, all right. So Verstappen first, Lewis Hamilton second, George Russell third. Sergio Perez fourth, Carlos Sainz fifth, Lance Stroll, your mate Lance Stroll sixth, who finished ahead of Fernando Alonso in seventh, yeah, and out qualified. Only because Fernando let him. Oh, let him. Why would he let him for in his home race? He literally came on the radio and said, "Tell Lance not to worry, just keep his eyes going forward," or some something along those lines. Oh my god! He said he was just trying to sub- build the gap over Esteban, and he was not going to attack Lance. Okay, fair he enough. could have. Pulled the wool out from underneath Lance's eyes any time he wanted. Okay. <laughs> Esteban Ocon, eighth. Uh, Zhao Gang, you ninth. And Pierre Gasly rounding out the top ten. So you honestly think that he would not have... Mind you, I did fall asleep, so I'll take your word for it. Who pays his bills? <laughs> that guy's dad pays his bills. <sighs> Alonso's father. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stroll's uh, father pays, pays Stroll's Alonso's father. bills. So. Did I just snort on the phone? Uh, probably. Oh, God. Well, it wouldn't be the first time. You can tell I'm back. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Max, title certainty. Just just give him the title now. Let's all go home and, and celebrate. What did it be? His second world title? Yeah. Yep. Second. Yeah. Third. Third, second, world third world title. Third world title. In a row. Yep. Yeah. Um, and uh, and yeah, everyone can save their cost cap for next year. They can start building their cars for next year. But like, look, how many teams are going to start doing that now? It's like so many teams are going to be fudging already, the books, yeah, claiming entertainment fudging, on drinks and stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's a, yeah. yeah, you should know all about that. I don't. Um, I just want to win them all. And 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 yeah, I'm, I'll be surprised if people don't start focusing on their 2024 cars now. It's pretty well, you know, the the Red Bull. Uh, Ch- constructors championship lead is is massive. Um, is it like a hundred odd points minimum? Yeah, more than. But more ha- than. how different are they going to be able to make the cars? Like in all honesty, I mean the regulations are quite stable until what twenty twenty six. Yeah, but you can still focus more of your energy into into the car for next season than you can can for this season. Like why mm. spend money on upgrades now rather than spend money on developing the car for next season? Mm. Um, you know you're not gonna you, you, if you're third fourth in the constructors, there's that little battle there, but you just want to try and keep on top of that. But you want to put all of the effort into building next year's car and, and simulating next year's car so that you can you can jump on that bandwagon and hopefully come out fighting i just want i just want an, another team don't care who it is to win a race but at the way things are going at the moment you would almost say you could you just about chalk red bull for every race oh look i think one or the other aston in in singapore possibly yeah is, is, is a shout um well but if we're gonna wait that, until september yeah i mean maybe, maybe mclaren in, Mon- in monza just oh, for fun cool. yeah well true true <laughs> You God. never know. You never know what's going to happen around the corner. And that's the best thing with motorsport. So, yeah, Canada's Canada's coming up, and uh, that's another short little track, and that's another one that'll play into Aston's hands. So, I heard that there was some forest fires going in Canada. There is some forest fires, but there, last I read, there was no um, no de- that's not a detriment, a detriment to the the running of the Grand Prix. Could you imagine if it actually cancelled the race? Like you'd have like floods Flooding in Italy, side, forest fires, fires and oh wow. So yep. that's Mother Nature talking about them running a more carbon neutral type setup. Yeah, and then flying in the middle of a swing of European races all the way back to Canada. I still don't understand the logic of that whole setup. There is no logic. There is no logic at no. all. No. Um, what do we say here? Ah, encouraging signs for Mercedes. I thought, you know what? Cons- all things considered, they actually did pretty well. Like, yeah, okay, thirty seconds behind Max, you probably argue the point. But considering that they've revel, well, they've basically tacked on a set of side pods to a car. It wasn't a bad effort. No, oh, well then, yeah, they obviously showed that their upgrades did bring a little bit. Um, they obviously probably would have finished third and fourth if Sergio hadn't miffed qualifying again. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, definitely looked faster, and they outpaced the Aston, and they outpaced the Alpine, which they and the Ferrari, which the they Ferrari. all struggled to do in uh, 
in Monaco as well. So it uh, it definitely looks like it's brought something to the car. Mm. Um, but the, like one track wonder, really, like we, how many times have we seen it before where they're fast at one track and then we, we'll go away to Canada and they'll be nowhere again. So yep. let's uh, let's see if it's a it's a more than one track wonder this uh, this new. Uh, I think they did some stuff to the floor as well, uh, as well as the side pods. So yep. a few little bits and tweaks and stuff on the, on the Mercedes. But yeah, you're right. They, they did look a little bit stronger than, than they have in the past. I need to question our, the Ferrari team with the way that they handle Charles. Like, okay, shocking qualifying session. So the, the obviously there was a mechanical issue of some nature, which I don't think they've disclosed what that was. But clearly the car wasn't up to standard that Charles wants. They start him on the hard tyre, which, yep, great call. Uh, understand that. Great call until you pit him in with, what, 20 laps into the race? It was and 17. It was 17 laps on the hard tyre. Yeah. Why? Not, not, well, obviously, he was complaining about something to, to have come in. like, And the tyre wear um, was high, was a lot higher. Um, and being on high fuel, um, it, that's not going to help as well. But, uh, but yeah, they should have gone a lot longer than, than 17 laps on the... On the hard tyre, so the the car is just so inconsistent, um, and that's yeah. what they're saying. Or Frederick was saying with uh, with Carlos as well. Like for one stint of the race, he lost twenty seconds on the rivals because he just couldn't find pace in the the set of tyres that he was on. Um, but then when they changed from from one hard compound tyre to the next hard compound tyre, they were they were back up to speed where they needed to be. So lots of inconsistencies for for the Ferrari squad, and they've got a lot of work to do. That's why last year was so critical, especially in that first half of the year, that they were on their A game yeah. and golden opportunity. Like, I mean, you don't know what would have happened in the second half of the year, but the first half of the year last year with Charles in particular, yeah. that was critical yeah. because new regulations, they got their act together. The car looks similar to last year's car, but it has either, well, Red Bull have clearly taken a step up, but do you can you argue that Ferrari have actually taken a step backwards? Not or have really. they remained the same? I think they've remained the same. Yeah. Yeah, I think like if you look at uh, the, the speed delta traces that they've, you know, Red Bull have gained this much, this person's gained this much, then Ferrari are one of the ones that are like right in the middle that have gained gained nothing or very minimal, whereas the other teams have all made big, big significant jumps. Mm, mm. They're, they've, yeah, in trouble, but who knows? We'll see what happens, hey? Yeah. Fingers crossed. We are off to a break, and then when we come back, we might go for a trip around the world with Lee. You're listening to Negative Camber, sponsored by True Steel Frames, providing steel frames and roof trusses for any size projects. TrueSteelFrames.com.au Welcome back to Negative Camber, the motorsport show, proudly brought to you by True Steel Frames and proud supporters of the Scuderia Ferrari Club of Adelaide. We're still dissecting what was quite a tedious Spanish Grand Prix, the drivers also had their uh, their comments and feedback on the event, and this is what they had to say. It's been a really good weekend. I mean, the car was really nice to drive, and you have a lot of confidence, you know, to really get everything out of it, and quite natural as well. And then in the race, yeah, we knew that, of course, with that tire choice, maybe it was a bit more risky to, to turn one, but luckily everything worked out. And, um, yeah, from there onwards, I could do my own race, even though on the hard compound I was not really happy. The, probably the compound was a bit too hard for... The, the conditions with you know colder weather and just not a lot of grip. Once I saw back to the soft, I think you could see the gap was going up again, and uh, yeah, that that tire was just a bit better. This is what we were hoping for when we had when we uh, brought the upgrades. I mean, we had hoped for more in the sense of a uh, bigger step. Um, the actual performance step they told us was was like under two tenths, so it wasn't like a that's still good, but not the step that we. Everyone's working so hard towards, but we'll take it. And but this result is definitely what we're working towards, and this is an amazing. And down to all the great, great work that's going on with the people back at the factory, just keeping their heads down. Just I hope everyone's re- feeling really proud back at the factory. Um, and George did a great job today, so we've, we've delivered good points on a whole. I mean, we've always been strong in Barcelona, but the upgrades definitely worked as expected, which is is really uh, promising to see. And you know, thanks a huge amount to everybody who put all so much hard work and effort into this, because it's truly truly paying off. But you know, we need to go into the next races. We're already uh, looking ahead to the next updates and how we can close that gap to Rebel. When are those next updates coming? Hopefully next race. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, 
wait for the headlines. You know, I, think, I think Mercedes are the best team on the grid in terms of development. We've seen it time and time again. Uh, we know where we fell short over the winter this year. Um, we're going to do our best to, to claw that gap back to Red Bull. It was quite hard to pass, actually. Um, once I was behind the, who was it, Fernando, I really had to do his pace. So that meant that I, it was a little bit trickier. But um, yeah, it's what it is. Um, I think if we wanted to finish higher, we needed a, a much better qualifying. So yeah, um, looking forward for, for Montreal now. I think we actually maximized everything we had. I gave my absolute best both in the start and the race pace. And I'm just a bit gutted that we couldn't uh, put in a bit of a stronger defense on the Red Bull and, and the two Mercedes because they were just so much quicker than us that uh, it wasn't even worth fighting them because uh, they would have passed me one lap later or, or another, you know, so uh, I did my absolute best, but uh, unfortunately this is uh, what we what we have now. I was a little disappointed when, uh, you know, cars just started passing us and we looked to be, you know, we had a good start and then settled into third and... Uh, I hope we could, uh, yeah, kind of, you know, keep uh, a good pace throughout the race, but just suffered a lot with degradation relative to, you know, Mercedes and Mercedes mainly and, and Ferrari as well. Um, they just had a quicker car today. When you get close to another car, you have some turbulent air and, uh, yeah, I damaged one floor yesterday already. <laughs> I didn't want to damage another one today. And uh, I didn't want that he damaged the floor either, you know, by, by defend. For us, it was the same six and seven, and seven and six, uh, same points. So we just, uh, yeah, uh, bringing the car home felt the, the right choice. The pace that we had today compared to yesterday in qualifying has dropped off uh, sig- significantly, and we were not as fast as um, as Saturdays as you know the good group uh, in front, and that's what we need to to work on and understand. Do you know why it's fallen away from you? Is it conditions? Was it just track specific? I think we know. Um, Yes, um, but uh, making it uh, a change that's going to be more tricky. Um, but what we have to remember from the last two weeks is that, uh, you know, we've scored, I've scored 19 points, you know, in two races. Uh, this we can be extremely proud of. And uh, we've made a huge step forward um, in terms of car pace. And, and I'm sure that we, we can, uh, you know, keep that going and, uh, and find an extra leg into the race. It was a well-executed race from my side. I think uh, one of the best two dates for me, performance in Formula 1. And a really good first lap gave us the opportunity to, to do something this race. And the pace was strong. Time management was crucial. We made it to the end keep the pressure high so when there's a chance I try to force us up for a mistake so everything was uh, in the right control in the control so really happy to finally grab some more points. You know starting from false would have been a very different race instead our stance uh, was just quite unlucky through one and two or three wide in turn two and uh, I had to open in the gravel not to have contact with Sergio uh, lost four positions so from qualifying false I ended up B14 on the first lap which changed your race massively so from there was just trying to recover i mean we've got so much work to do we it's very strange and very difficult to understand because we go on the first set of hard and it feels so bad no grip at all especially the fronts they were just really really bad and then you go in the second stint of hard and then everything feels fine and you just do exactly the same thing as a driver and it just feels in a completely different place so um yeah luckily we had much less problems compared to qualifying yesterday where the car was more doing what we expected. Unfortunately, though, we still have these troubles with tyres, uh, especially on the first team. So, uh, yeah, after I gave it, I've given it all, literally everything, um, every lap, and I feel like it's really harsh, that penalty, to be honest, in my perspective, and there's still space there, and just on the car, uh, suddenly run off the area and pretend like I got he got forced, but I, there was still space he could still um, stay in the, in the track so in my perspective I don't know but I just it's hard to accept the reality uh, that I lost points after after that big race so yeah it's uh, disappointed yeah really really disappointed disappointing afternoon um, yeah didn't have a very good first lap from, from myself and then we just had not a lot of pace after that so um Tricky afternoon, need to understand why, um, because it, it cooled down a bit, which we liked, but um, we still didn't have enough pace, so um, yeah, need to have a look at, at why we 
we were quick enough today? I think we, we lost too much ground in, in lap one. Uh, I don't really have a clear explanation for it. I think we were just at the wrong place. Uh, we obviously started on the inside and we stick to that through one, two, and uh, there was something happening in front, so I had to uh, jump on the brakes. Uh, and in the beginning, I was struggling a little bit, but uh, from basically the last, I'd say, 25 laps onwards, we were very competitive. So I think we yeah, just need to try and put it better together, and I think then we, uh, yeah, are, are pretty competitive. A tough, difficult. Um, unfortunately, the, the deck was really high for us, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we, we had to three stop the race where I think a lot of the competition two stopped. Um, and still, the pace is just you know as similar to them. So uh, yeah. Um, it looks, you know, at first glance that over one lap, obviously, we're competitive. But uh, in the long runs, we still have, have some homework to do and some uh, some pace and deck to find. We can't really get too much better because we don't have upgrades. So, so you know, we, we can do so much with the setup of the car and improve it that way. But um, we've got to wait for that to happen, really. So it felt like we were optimizing our weekends. I don't really think we did too much wrong uh, in qualifying or in the race. Uh, unfortunately, these kind of, let's call them normal circuits um, expose us a little bit hopefully you know when we go to a track like Canada we can um, do a bit better we knew we were going to be slow and difficult to get in the points our, our target was to try and be in the points today um, whether it was ninth or 10th or something so uh, yeah obviously race lap 1 cost us everything but uh, at the same time would have been unlikely to finish in the top 10 today so uh, yeah I guess everyone's expectations were too high after yesterday um, which we tried to manage as much as we could but at the same time today was the pace that we've had all year and we we're just uh, normal paced yesterday was just a you know unknown uh, special day for us at the beginning of every stint it was uh, very competitive but uh, our tires just fell off so quickly and um, we had to do a three stop which wasn't the uh, optimum so hopefully we can try and uh, learn about what caused it and you know uh, improve but certainly it was a, a tough race something is um, broken or wrongly installed or something just I'm more than one second off the pace sliding around um, it's quite frustrating how do we fix this is it we, we will find out I'm sure we'll find out something whether it's mechanical or error I don't know but I think since yesterday something is just not, not correct that was a positive first three quarters of the race uh but yeah the the last didn't 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 go well um don't really know why just uh couldn't find couldn't find the pace lack of grip um quite a lot of tire deg so not sure why this variation from stint to stint we'll have to understand that but um yeah i mean it was always going to be a, a tricky one and there you have it, driver reaction for the Spanish Grand Prix. A lot of disappointed, disgruntled drivers <clears throat> outside of maybe Lewis and George and Max. Everyone was kind of confused. They all had a lot to say. That's one of the longest driver reactions I reckon we've we've done. That's They all had plenty to say. It's funny, like, that circuit is... I mean, I'm glad they've actually restored the original corner back to the yeah. way it was. Yeah, and that, like we could hear a lot of them talking about the extra deg that it gave them, the degradation of the tyres, having to be so full throttle over those last three corners rather than that clumsy chicane. Oh, boo-hoo. A bit of deg. Like, wow. it interesting. There was more pit stop strategy. Like, far out. Imagine imagine pit stop strategy because the tyres were wearing out too fast. Oh, my God. Yeah, I know. Who'd, who'd have thought, hey? But. Yeah. I think the other thing about that track too is that because it's such a test track and those, well, in pre-season, normally anyway, they do so many kilometres that I think it actually dilutes the race itself Yeah, because they're all just on autopilot. And it's mostly like two by two, like, you know, it's really a chassis circuit. So you get your yep. cars that are fast and, and then, yeah, like we said, we'll see what, what the upgrades, whether they go further than, than just Barcelona. Mm. Well, Canada coming up, I think it's going to be a bit of more, more or less the same. Although sometimes Canada does have a habit of throwing up a surprise result. Yeah, wet weather is always a threat in Canada, although this time it's bushfires. But, um, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. If Ferrari win Le Mans, we're going to win the Canadian Grand Prix. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay I, wouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't go put my mortgage on it, but anyway. <laughs> on that note, let's head off to a break. Are you a harness racing fan? Would you like to know more about this exciting sport? Would you like to buy a pacer? Are you looking for winners? Then tune in to Radio Italia Uno every Saturday morning at 8am for In the Running Line, our brand new harness racing show. 
we cover everything harness racing in South Australia and around Australia. Simon Jones, or Simo as he's known to his friends, will join us each and every week for his Inside Mail, previewing the Saturday Night Globe Derby Park meeting, the Ruffie of the Week and his Wonder Watch. Melanie Kittle will join us for all of the latest news and gossip. Plus, our interview of the week, where we highlight an outstanding drive or training feat. And we reminisce with some interviews from the past. That's in the running line every Saturday morning from 8am on Radio Italia Uno 87.6. Brought to you by S.A. Botra, Aaron Bain Racing and Summit Bloodstock. Listening to Negative Camber, sponsored by True Steel Frames, providing steel frames and roof trusses for any size projects. TrueSteelFrames.com.au. Welcome back to Negative Camber, the motorsport show, proudly brought to you by True Steel Frames and proud supporters of the Scuderia Ferrari Club of Adelaide. And speaking of the Scuderia Ferrari Club, Simon Major, who's one of our loyal listeners, uh, saw me in the pits this morning when I arrived at uh, at Southern Go Kart Club, and the first thing he talked about was Le Mans and Ferrari and how good it was to be out of the sport for 50 years and get a front row lockout for the race of the two fa- two fastest cars, Lee. I haven't been raced in Le Mans in 50 years. Amazing. And now Amazing. we are with three, and thir- three hours and 13 minutes left, 10.6 seconds ahead. Come on, boys. So look, what surprises me the most is that after... What is that? 21 hours of racing. There's mm. only 10 seconds in it. That is a testament to machine and driver that the race can be so close. And it has been like this in Le Mans for such a long time. Like strategies, ebb and flow, backwards and forwards. Um, yeah, there's there's something to be said. And it makes why why do we do the other 23 hours? Why let's just do a one <laughs> hour sprint race if it's going to stay that close anyway? The thing I love about it this year is that you've got all those manufacturers that are in it, like the hypercar rules of drawn out ferrari toyota cadillac van wall of all things um who else was there there's peugeot there's porsche which have actually been really disappointing like stuttgart right now will go to america and see roger and say rog come on man we're six laps down in le mans that's like our hunting ground what the hell yeah yeah Um, i'm not gonna be happy no not at all um, and then obviously you've got NASCAR. NASCAR yeah. have decided to throw a, you know a car in. That's yeah, obviously a little bit more fifty six entry. It's yeah. going well in GTEM. That's going and work going well. But the amount of social media posts I've seen of this car in terms of the sound, because you know the French and the Europeans have heard nothing, nothing like, like it. it. Yeah, yeah, so different and so big and bulky, and how fast it is as well. Like that's it's opening some eyes. That's for sure. It's so American though. Absolutely. You know, yeah. let's go to France and we'll bring our NASCAR. <laughs> you know. <what> I mean? <laughs> That's the worst uh, American accent I've ever heard. I, I, I didn't really try. <laughs> Would you like me to do No, I won't do no, my kidney. No no no, 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 no. No, I did that two years ago. That made you upset. <laughs> how about we go... Speaking of European, how about we go for a trip around the world, hey? And, as always, we'll start with the NASCAR... Two races have been won again in the NASCAR Cup Series. Races being held at Charlotte Motor Speedway for the Coca-Cola 600, which is the longest race on the calendar in terms of distance for those guys and girls. And the Enjoy Illinois 300 held at Gateway Motorsport Park. It was a chaotic race in the Coca-Cola 600 with 16 caution periods in total. The most notable due to an incident with Denny Hamlin and Chase Elliott, which saw the latter ended up being suspended by NASCAR for reckless driving. In the end, though, it was Ryan Blaney who ended a long winning drought by taking the chequered flag just under a second ahead of William Byron. The win is Blaney's first points-paying win since his 2021 win in the August Daytona race. So that's been a long dry spell for him. The race at Gateway was similarly chaotic with multiple red flags due to weather in the local area and late race restarts. At the end of a marathon five-hour long race, it was Kyle Busch who saw the flag first, holding off Denny Hamlin and Joey Logano. On track, the action was relatively tame by NASCAR standard with only five different leaders and ten lead changes. In the Xfinity Championship, races were held at Charlotte and Portland with Justin Allgaier and Cole Custer winning those races. Custer was the beneficiary of a last corner collision by the two race leaders on the last lap and he was able to steal the win away. In the Craftman Truck Series, there was one race held at Charlotte which was won by Ben Rhodes. 
IndyCar, the greatest spectacle in motorsports, has been run and won with the Indy 500 taking place on the last weekend in May in what was a perfect weekend on the American motorsports scene for Penske Racing. Joseph Newgarden was victorious in a one-lap dash to the flag where he held off Marcus Ericsson and Santino Ferrucci. The race was marred by three late-race red flags due to various incidents which set up the one-lap dash to the flag with Newgarden passing Ericsson in Turn 3 to take his first Indy 500 win. Scott McLaughlin and Will Power finished 14th and 23rd respectively. The series then travelled to the new Detroit City Street Circuit, which has replaced the famed Bell Isle Circuit. Many drivers were critical of the makeup of the circuit, slamming it for its tightness and the level of the bumps. Once the racing got underway, it was Alex Pillow who came out victorious, leading home Will Power and Felix Rosenquist. McLaughlin was classified in 7th. Alex Pillow now holds a 51-point lead over Marcus Ericsson in the championship standings, with McLaughlin and Power now 7th and 8th, respectively, and just on 100 points away from Pillow. WRC, the Rally of Sardinia in Italy, has been run and won, with Thierry Novell coming out on top ahead of Lappi, uh, which made this a 1-2 for Team Hyundai, with Rovan Parra in 3rd. Neuville finished the rally 33 seconds ahead of Esapaka Lappi, who pushed hard to try and take his first rally win. Rovan Parra still leads the championship a full round ahead of Novell, with Otanik in 3rd place. Moving on to some World of Outlaws, five more races have been held in the NOS Energy World of Outlaws series. Carson Macedo has been on a hot streak and has overcome the deficit he had and now sits atop the standings by six points. Brad Sweet has dropped to second and David Gravel now sits third, 32 points behind. Over the next couple of weeks, the drivers will compete in seven more rounds, races to be held at Knoxville, Beaver Dam and Husset Speedway. FIA F2, the F2 Championship, was back in action alongside the F1 races held in Monaco and Spain. Ayumi Iwasa and Frederick Vesti shared the wins in Monaco, while in Spain it was a prima power team clean sweep with Vesti and Oliver Behrman sharing the wins. The Monaco round was not a great one for Australia's hopeful Jack Doohan, who was involved in a fiery crash where he couldn't get his seatbelt buckle undone. He did escape unharmed and returned for Spain round where he was a little more successful. Frederick Vesti is leading the championship standings, 11 points ahead of Teo Porsche, with Awasa a further 17 points behind. Duan currently sits in 12th in the standings and is a full 70 points behind Vesti. FIA F3 also raced on the streets of Monaco and on circuit the Barcelona. Pepe Marti and Gabriel Mini took the wins in Monaco, and it was Zach O'Sullivan who shared the wins with Pepe Marti in Barcelona. The two race wins have now catapulted Marti into second in the championship. He is currently 24 points behind Gabriel Bortolotto, with Dino Beganovic currently in third place, seven points behind Marti. And that is the wrap-up of motorsport from around the world. Excellent. Well done, my friend, as always. As always. Mate, have you seen some... I've been sharing some footage lately of some WRC stuff, and, oh, man, it's... I have to go and see a WRC round in the flesh because yeah. some of those dudes and this, just the speed is next level. Yeah, like, look, it's titanium balls kind of stuff. That is, like, you've got to be either no brain or uh, absolutely just silly um, to, mm. to drive a WRC car. It's... um. Yeah, it's next level stuff, that's for sure. How would you rate a WRC driver compared to, say, you know, every, you know obviously everyone they call F1 is the peak, right? Would you uh, would you go as far as saying that a WRC driver would actually be better? It's it's just different strokes for different folks, really. Like mm. you look at um, Sebastian Loeb, and they go and race on the bitumen, and then then you know they're not that great. Um, but you throw them in at something like the the race of champions, and they do okay. Um, same with Sebastian Ogier. Like they just they just don't go well on a on a circuit. But then mm. you throw someone like Formula One, like Max Verstappen, or or even Kimi um, into or Robert Kubica into a rally car, and they've definitely got some adjusting to do. So. I think they're very, very specialised in their own unique genres of motorsport. And like you, you know, throwing Kimi, who was a Formula One world champion, into racing NASCAR, and 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 he wasn't outstanding. Mm. Um, it took Marcus Ambrose a long time to come from being uh, amazing in a supercar to going and being amazing in a NASCAR. Um, and even then, like he was really only amazing on on the road circuits. So. I think if you're if you're specialised in a discipline of motorsport, to go outside of that, there are very few people um, that that can make that transition, and I think that's where you start to see the 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 big big comparisons be drawn. Um, you know, like 
one that comes to mind is Shane Van Gisbergen. He he can drive the wheels off of anything, and then you know another one's maybe Kyle Larson. But there ain't mm. too many around at this time of of, of our, in, in our generation that have got the same skill set as those two guys in particular. I'd be keen to see how Kyle, uh, Kyle Larson goes at Indy next year for McLaren. I yes. really, I don't. Is he actually still going to be? Was I correct in hearing? A fortnight ago, that he's actually going to go do the Indy 500 and then actually do the NASCAR yes. race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. How? How do they pull that off? Uh, so the the race for the NASCARs generally starts about two hours after the finish of the Indy cars. Oh wow! So okay. it's like literally, you there's a there's a plane airport. A plane. I was going to call a plane place. <laughs> <laughs> it's late. There's a there's an airport not far from Charlotte Motor Speedway. So yep. you like literally out of the car. I mean, from from Indianapolis Motor Speedway, it's like right there on the on the back stretch. So you're literally out of the car. You pick up your race gear and you're in the jet, uh, and then you're in the jet to to Charlotte Motor Speedway. And then, like I said, there's a there's an airport there as well, like right next to the track. So you it's it's doable. It's very tight, and not many people have done it. Um, and I don't think anyone's been successful in actually like winning both races. Um, but yeah, yeah, he's he's going to give it a good nudge. Could you imagine if he wins the Indy 500 first time out yeah, next it, year? It, and it's like it's not even it's not silly to think that it could happen. Like no. he is just that special as a driver. But like it's not even just the the the, the Saturday Sunday. It's it's Saturday as well for qualifying. Um, so he's got to go to Charlotte to qualify the NASCAR and then fly back to Indy for the race and then fly back to Charlotte for the race for that as well. So um, yeah, yeah, it's a lot of a commitment. Um, and, no, and knowing him, he'll probably race some some sprint car race on the Friday night as well, just because it's Kyle Larson. So. Kyle Larson, yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah no, uh, he yeah, it's going to be a big schedule um, for him. But uh, but yeah, no, it, it'll get done. James Collado versus Brandon Hartley, ladies and gentlemen, for the 100th Le Mans 24 yeah, hour. You're calling that, that it's going to be down to them two, and there's still three hours to go. And three you're, hours you're to dreaming. go, but the Ferrari is now on average. Half a second a lap faster than the Toyota at the moment. Amazing. We have now pulled out a lead of 13.82 seconds, my friend. You're amazing. Like, you're getting your hopes so high up here. I've got like, nothing else to go for, Lee, this I year. Can't <laughs> believe, I can't believe that Ferrari have let you down so hard, and yet with three hours to go, more than the length of every Formula One race, with three hours to go, you're this excited. We will win them all. All right. You keep willing that into existence, mate. I'm, I, I'm manifesting like you wouldn't believe, man. Absolutely manifesting. They've thrown Manif- it. They've thrown themselves into the gravel once today. <sighs> I dare say it'll happen again. Toyota are just saving tires. They'll come come back at the end. You know what's funny though? Because Simon actually thought the other way around that Ferrari had the better tire wear than Toyotas, and Toyotas are going out like the clappers. No. And I'm thinking, man, that's that well, it wouldn't surprise me. But now you're saying the other way around. <laughs> Yeah, we'll, oh see, we'll see what goes on. We'll see what goes on. There's still three hours to go, but it's it's boiling down to an exciting finish with you know only 10, 12 seconds in it. So I'm gonna have to. All I can do is rely on live timing because I don't have Stan. Actually, speaking of Stan, did you notice that on social media over the course of the weekend, because they had the TCR race at Winton, yeah. that a lot of the drivers were actually really pumping the fact that the heat one, I think, if I remember correctly, so Saturday was actually going to be live on air on 9 Gem. No, I didn't didn't see that at all, but I did see that it's actually been very very um prominent on on Instagram and on Facebook. They've had like a live stream as well, so not just streamed to Stan. That Stan TV deal as in that whole speed series as much as it's actually um you know in terms of the quality of the presentation is actually really good. That's killing all of those classes. Yeah. Because no one's watching it. You know, they should have left it on Channel Seven. Stuck behind another paywall, and you'd rather watch a replay late at night on on free to air than uh, than and have to pay another fifteen bucks a month, unless you're like me and you have a subscription to just about everything and anything at the moment. Really? Yes, yeah, so I got the stand. I got uh, I got the Netflix. I got the the Foxtel, so I can watch all my motorsport. And I've got uh, yeah, we we just got Disney the other night actually as well because oh. uh, we wanted to watch the Mighty Ducks, and the Mighty Ducks is on Disney. So gonna help a brother out, and give a stand password, and no, nah, no, nah. come on, man, no, nah, I'm gonna make you wait. <sighs> I'll give it to you with about three minutes to go. Of what? Of the one. Oh God, don't do that to me. On the last lap, I'll send you my details. If we win, yes. <laughs> Yes, send. But then by that stage, I'm watching MotoGP, so no, you'll cop they, it in stereo. When they when they throw themselves into the gravel and they're stuck, I'll send it to you at this. And we're like, oh my god, this amazing thing happened. And, oh, and you, yo, I just I literally thought about it right now. <laughs> you're killing me, man. All right, we're off to a break, and then when we come back, we're going to find out what grind your gears. You're listening to the Motorsport Podcast. 
listening to Negative Camber, sponsored by True Steel Frames, providing steel frames and roof trusses for any size projects. TrueSteelFrames.com.au Welcome back to Negative Camber, the motorsport show, proudly brought to you by True Steel Frames and proud supporters of Scuderia Ferrari Club Adelaide. For our Italian listeners, just letting you know, well, there is currently three hours left of the Le Mans 24-hour. Ferrari are currently leading the Le Mans 24-hour from Toyota by 14.3 seconds with James Calado in Ferrari beating Brandon Hartley. Cadillac is actually third position, about a minute off it's the pace. Brandon. It's Brandon Hartley. Brandon Hartley. Yeah, well, you know what? I'm struggling to see on my phone. <laughs> so, um, yes. Anyway, speaking of Italian... Um, we were going to do what grinds Lee's gears, but I did forget that the MotoGP in Mugello is actually currently happening at the moment. And we've got some highlights from the sprint race that occurred overnight. Here they are. We are all set for sprint action here at the Oakley Grand Prix of Italy. Full throttle. Lights out and we are go here at Mugello. It's a really good launch from pole position by the world champion. Pekka Banyai strutting straight in behind him. Look He's Mark Marquez and Jack Miller got a lightning start as we expected on the factory KTM. Marquez will hook the inside line. One of the Prima, Prima Ducati has gone really, really wide. But Marquez there in second place. Yeah, oh, he's gone down. He's gone down as well. Zarco was wide, he's also crashed. Oh, Alex Marquez is down. Outside our commentary box window, the white flags are waving, so they can now, riders are now permitted to change motorcycles, and Banyaya clearly very cautious. Yep. Martins threw on him. Look at the rain spots falling at Corantayo. Banyaya does respond immediately. There are the rain flags then. High drama here, as we expected in this sprint here in Mugello. The rain adding to the tension and the drama. That's three seconds slower than they were going in qualifying, so that's how much they're sort of leaving a bit of margin out there as the spots of rain fall. No spots of rain here as they come through Casanova and Savelli as Bagnaia tries to regroup, but he's got Mark Marquez right on his rear wheel, much like he did in qualifying this morning. Looks like the rain's at its worst around sort of Scarperia, turn 10, then through Corantayo down into turn 12. That's where it really all concertinaed up, didn't it? You could, you could almost throw in a blanket over the top six or seven riders. Here we are there now. This is where the rain was clearly tumbling in its heart on the last lap. Oh, 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 oh. Miller gives a big nudge there to Marquez into Scarperia, the second gear. 105 kilometers now a corner. Miller was coming through regardless there, wasn't he? Brad Binder's got a long lap penalty then. So the FI Miller GP stewards have had a close look at that one. Oh, wow. Binder then gives a massive nerf there to Fabio Quattro, who loses places to both Bastini and Alexis Spargaro. You can't take your eyes off this one again, can you? Binder will get the signal soon. He's got to come to the long lap penalty for his contact with Alex Marquez for the first quarter. And now he's just slammed into the side of Quattro going down to Corantayo. It's a Ducati 1, 2, 3, 4 as they come onto the start finish rate as Bagnaia now tries to regain the lead. Yeah, and a few more spots of rain just where you don't want it when you're at 306 kilometers now on that crest coming into San Donato. Martin just got in a little bit hot there, didn't he? That was the minutest of mistakes. The punishment didn't really fit the crime, but he loses the lead. Bagnaia back at the front now as they climb up through this third sector. Your top three, it's Bagnaia, Martin and Vesecki. Martin there with just that little bit of slipstream. He couldn't quite pull up on the brakes, could into the first corner. And on the previous lap, he lost the lead right there in San Donato to Bagnaia. This time around, another small mistake. He pays dearly for it again. Vesecki sweeps into second. Bagnaia defending resolutely on the brakes down into Scarferia. Vesecki, though, looks like he's building some serious speed here. Building momentum, building confidence. And it looks like he's going to waste little time in attacking Bagnaia very, very quickly on that 72 bike. In fact, he almost oh. runs into the back of him going into Corantayo. He gets that very good exit out of the start finished straight but Betzeki will now be starting to pin up that slip street. A couple of times yesterday we saw this, didn't we? Betzeki was following Bagnaia, picking up some tricks of the trade around this Pagello circuit. He's not going to be close enough to attack Bagnaia on the brakes into San Donato. How good was Bagnaia there on the front end of that, the Catalan Nova machine, the 26-year-old desperately trying to make it a hat-trick of sprint wins in the first six sprints of 2023. They're starting to pick up the pace now, the leading pair. They both set fastest laps on that last time around. And Yaya has really got into a good rhythm right now. Four laps to go in this sprint. He just found a 146-187. Now, that was a full two tenths quicker than Vetseki Panko Banyaya, who, as we mentioned, has been the superstar of Saturdays. And he's loved this new sprint format. Banyaya has pulled the pin here. He's taken another tenth of a second out of Vetseki. His advantage now with three to go in the sprint, nearly four tenths. Now, then, there may well be something to think about late on here for 
your sprint leader, Pekka Bagnaia, has just been given a track limits warning. So he's going to have to be inch perfect then now over these last, what, one and three quarter laps. And when you're under intense pressure from the likes of Marco Betsecki and Jorge Martin, that is easier said than done, isn't it? Bagnaia then drops down through Casanova and Savelli on this lap number 10. Pekka Bagnaia is going to be tasting more race for Prosecco here in Mugello. He was winning the Grand Prix here one year ago. There is more sprint glory in Mugello then for Pekka Bagnaia, the world champion. It's his third win in six sprints so far in 2023. He takes another three points out of Marco Betsecki in the world championship. It was another Mugello masterclass for the world champion. Bagnaia does eke out that lead a little bit more now. He extends it to four points over Marco Bezzecchi. See? The Pico show. It's great. You guys hung crap on him like a couple of weeks ago. I heard. I heard. I heard. Right. And now... There you go. He can win on Saturday, but can he win on Sunday? The only reason that he's still even half in this championship is because he keeps winning on Saturday and everyone else falls off on Sunday. It doesn't, no one else wants to win the championship. Uh, you know what that reminds me of? Was it the COVID championship of 2020 where, where Yuan Mir ended up winning the title? Because everyone else fell everyone, off. Everyone else was falling off. Yeah. And now Yuan Mir can't ride a bike at the moment because he's on the Honda and he can't actually sit on it. He yeah. had to pull out from Mugello because he fell off again. Yep. You know, there's a few people hobbling around the pad- paddock. Even your mate Pecco, he's hobbling around the paddock. And Alicia Spargo has uh, had a few falls as well and he's got a busted up uh, ankle. I saw Pecco with the, walking with the cane. I'm thinking, where did he get the... Why would, where? Why? I hadn't heard of anything of any fall or something like that. <laughs> what do you mean you haven't heard of any falls? Is that about what talking about? 17 this year? Oh, just three, two or three. He's the new Mark that. Marquez. Oh, God. Don't even go there. Did you see how... He, I don't know whether you saw qualifying yesterday, but uh, where Pecco was gesticulating with Marquez, who just fired out of pit lane and then slows the bike down to hold up Pecco yeah. and... If you've ever seen if ever you've seen an Italian gesticulating like angrily on a bike at three hundred and forty kilometers an hour, Pecco was giving him the beans. Don't worry about that. Absolutely, but no, it was a pretty interesting sprint race overnight. Um, the rain threatened to come, and it made a very interesting first couple of laps uh, with with some some guys sliding off. Miller looked like he was going to come through to the front, and then faded very quickly when it dried out again, and. Uh, Jorge Martin and uh, Johan Zarco were right there battling it out on the last couple of laps. So, very interesting. What's uh, what's going to happen tonight in the race? Oh, Italy in rain at the moment is just ridiculous. So, if it's wet, oh, God. We know what happened with Pecco when it rained last time, and it wasn't good. No. He'll, um, make, a, he'll make a habit of falling over oh, again. Shush. Um, oh, God. Um, look, my heart says Pecco because he's just a Pecco guy, but I would also be surprised if... But Seki or someone like that ended up coming through to win. Um, I re- I'll go as far as saying Mark Marquez will have another tumble or he'll probably finish somewhere in the top five, top six. Um, like with Le Mans, for example, like he had that bike second or third, didn't need to be there, two or three laps to go, bins it, that's the yeah. end of that. So Mark Marquez will do what Mark Marquez does best. There's nothing. There's no more pressure than being an Italian rider riding an Italian bike trying to win the Italian MotoGP. Yeah. As well. at, at Mugello. At Mugello. Yeah. You know, especially when you're the defending world champion. So, oh, but, you know, it'll either make or break, really. Yeah. Yeah, no, like, hopefully the KTM with Brad and, and Jack can get up there as well. And, and they set, you know, a couple of fast sectors in qualifying yesterday. But, uh, you know, Jack's the same deal. The bit of the pressure, the excitement of being at the front and battling it out, he can... Uh, throw it down the road just as quick as anyone but I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be a pretty exciting race it normally is at Mugello it's one of the races where the Moto GP race actually stays as tight as some of the Moto 3 races um, just due down to the fact that there's not really a way for anyone to break away because there's that huge long straight and there's there's a couple of them where they can get back in the draft yeah and I mean they broke the, the Pecco when he set pole broke the lap record I and mean, they, they broke the speed record as well like really? three, 366.1 kilometers an hour just think about that for a sec, man. 366. No, I, yep, yep. Wow. Yep. Right. Oh, Did strapped, I see that in real life too? Yeah, strapped <laughs> to a little two-wheeled missile. Like like I was saying, I was saying before that to do rally, you've got to have titanium balls or hmm. have no brains. And I reckon that's the same thing for, for my riding my yeah, MotoGP go, bike. go karters kind of feel the same thing. We've got a petrol tank in between our legs. Yeah, we're, we're just doing 100 kilometers an hour. Yeah, and we're, we're, we're very well in touch with the ground on four anchor points, not two real 
real tiny lean points. I don't know how they do it, man. Like, honestly, just if you think about it and then you... like, I mean, I've never ridden a motorbike before. Obviously, a bike, yes. Yeah. And r- there's gnarlies it got for me was riding down Gorge Road once. Like, and I had a bit of a tailwind assistance and I probably touched about 110K coming down through Kangaroo Creek. And you're going down there, you don't think about it. You think, wow, this is amazing. And you kind of think to yourself, wow, if I fall off here, this is good, yes. goodbye world. It was it's nice to be know ugly. you. Yeah. Yeah. But these guys are doing 366 at the end of the front straight at Magello. Like, that's, that's just, that's just silly. Actually, tell me, Cottrell last week, when uh, the last fortnight, BMX, you guys were all BMX. Is it, did I miss the memo at some point about BMX yeah. or what? No, no. Be like, even Biscuits was BMX. Like, Nick Carabas was BMX. Like, yeah, it seems like yeah, there's a lot of a lot of racing drivers start um, start in BMX or, mm. or something along those lines because it's probably the thing that you can get into uh, the cheapest and the, at the youngest age. Mm. Um, so I, I think I started riding on a BMX track when I was like three and a half, four years old, yeah. um, and then obviously got into go karting around seven, seven, eight. So uh, I had a couple of years of, of riding BMX bikes, but um, but yeah. Well, that's the thing because I remember, like, I used, I had bikes when I was a kid because um, I had to do a, a bit of a thing for work where it was a, what, who am I? Yeah. And so I had to create, like, a bit of a video of a story about me. Um, and I look back and found my old pictures of bikes and stuff like that. But I didn't start actually racing bikes until, well, God, um, oh, th- four, oh, five, just before I met Bianca. Yeah. And it was Criterion Racing, which was circuit-based because that, to me, reminded me of racing. Yeah. Like in terms of circuit racing, I look back on it now. I kind of wish I'd spent money. The money that I spent on the bikes, I spent on a go kart. It would have been two stroke driven and all that sort of yeah. stuff. And who knows? Back then, you would have got something decent for the same price you paid for your bike too. Yeah, and I was lighter then too, which means I probably would have been standing on podiums and feeling good about myself. Possibly, possibly. That's all right. I'm, I'm, <laughs> it's all right. It's okay. I'll, I'll come. Yeah, actually, you know what? You I'll owe do. me a co-drive. Do I? Yeah, well, you dumped me for the last Enduro last year for the four strokes. I only thought about that recently. We're talking yeah, about we've got a, got a new brand. Like, I'd have to roll with the brand. There's roll. plenty of there's plenty of guys at Paraka this year. I'll sign you up with someone that want to come out and do the Enduro. So. I, I owe Mr. Reichelt. Mr. Reichelt, because I pulled out. I wasn't fit last year. No, you weren't. Whereas now, I'm pumping him laps, baby, and I'm, I'm coming out, and I feel like I'm going to do Iron Man. There you go. Well, you might be a, with Simon behind the wheel of the, the other cart. It'll be a light and a heavy, that's for sure, and uh, a couple of mediums might uh, in my team might not... Uh, what well, might be a quite a quite a close challenge, so I'm looking Father forward time, to it. Father Time may have slowed Raquel down maybe half a second or so. He's the little one's due pretty soon. Yeah, it's not far. Like I mean, I think maybe ten ten weeks. Uh, no, I can't be making no, five than that. five or six weeks maybe. Not even. No, nah, it's it's about that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can't imagine Melissa. Well, actually, no, I can Melissa, imagine Melissa going to the speedway or watching Simon race and stuff like that too. So, yeah. Mr. Reichelt, if you're listening, I hope you're doing well, mate. Melissa as well. Good luck on the up and coming birth of your little one. And we are off to a break, and then we are going to give birth to find out what grinds Lee's gears. You're listening to Negative Camber, sponsored by True Steel Frames, providing steel frames and roof trusses for any size projects. TrueSteelFrames.com.au Welcome back to Negative Camber, the motorsport show, proudly supported by True Steel Frames and proud supporters of the Scuderia Ferrari Club of Adelaide. Episode 50, we are on the final stretch. Final, final lap of episode 50. Final lap, final lap. Um... Let's find out what grinds your gears. In the meantime, I'll find out what's happening in Le Mans. Now it's time for Grind My Gears with Jamie and Lee. So outside of my Le Mans race updates, what grinds your gears, Mr. Harrison? You're dead. I've got a few tonight. Your hype over Ferrari winning the Le Mans. Well, we haven't won still, yet. We haven't won we, yet. Yeah, exactly. I'm glad you're seeing that now because the whole show has been we are winning Le Mans. Anyway, we, we all are. know I have just made the journey back from melbourne by, uh, via road with your wife no i'm in the v-dub oh yes yes yeah. yes 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 yep. with my new my new partner yep um and so i've got a couple i've got a couple that have, have struck me on this drive and number one is google maps google maps i typed in i need to get from location a to location b to pick up my my stuff from q8 and then get to location c 
And instead of instead of taking me the most direct route, keeping me to going through to to the bigger suburbs, you know, or bigger towns like Horsham and Dimboola and all the usual ones that you pass when you're when you're on your way from Adelaide to Melbourne, for some reason, my Google Maps decided to take me down all of these little back streets and like cut across i didn't even go through horsham i was like using horsham as a point of reference i was like, oh, gonna stop a fuel at horsham or get a feed all the rest of it but man it just took me down these most random of like goat tracks where it would be a one lane piece of bitumen and then either side of the road was like three quarters of a lane of dirt each either side and i was like if someone comes the other way i'm in the gulf like i don't want to throw it in the sand i don't want to hit a pothole and it's taking me down all these crappy little side streets and i was fed up I was so fed up. I didn't have any gears to grind because it's not it's not manual, so I, I couldn't couldn't grind gears literally. I just have to do them fiz- figuratively now. Um, but Soft, yeah, yeah. I know it was just that just absolutely railed me a little bit. And then I finally made it back to the the benefit of that was that there was no other traffic on these roads because no one else's Google Maps obviously thought that was the most. <laughs> does yours? Does it have Android CarPlay at all, or are you running off your phone? No, I was running off my phone. Yeah, mm. yeah. taxi driver style. Yeah, 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 exactly. Knowing better, uh, but even when I logged in in the phone nav system, it like it was going to take me the same way as my as my phone. So I was a bit perplexed with that. Anyway, but so that was the good thing. And then when I finally did rejoin the same road that everybody else was being told to take by their Google Maps, man, why can't people just stick to the speed limit? <laughs> like, why, why do we got to be doing one hundred and ten, then down to like eighty five, then up to like. 100 then back down to 85 then up to 110 again and then down to like 100 it's like these people are driving modern day cars that either have cruise control or have like the speed limiter function on the car so that you can just set it at your speed and hold the foot flat and we're just going to do 110 and the car's going to look after the rest of it for us what the, what the hell are going on with people like honestly can I ask you a question? Yes. Were you sticking to the speed limit? Yeah. yeah, yeah Are yeah. you sure? Yeah, yeah. No, because I was like, duh, it's a public holiday. It's a long weekend, double demerits. I'm driving a car with someone else's license plate on it until I get it registered here in Adelaide. Like, I just didn't need any. Oh, okay. Yep, fair enough. I didn't need anything, any blowback, anything. So, I was being a good boy. And when, like, I was leaving Melbourne or coming into Melbourne, sorry, from, from Mornington, and I was on the Monash and there was a Volkswagen GTI and a BMW M3 that tried to race me. They thought that, they thought that I was I was ready to go, and so they pulled up next to me like revved and then raced off. And you bet your bottom dollar that I wanted to join in that race, but mm-hmm. I was like, you know what? No, I'm going to be the bigger man here and let these little willied so and sos go and flash it all around for the world to see. And yeah. I just cruised along at my hundred kilometers an hour. <laughs> Why don't I get the impression that your right foot? Suffered a severe case of leg day at the gym, and you you know how you're like really fatigued after leg day, and yeah. your leg starts twitching and yeah, all yeah, that yeah, sort of yeah, stuff, yeah. and your leg was like just yeah. pulsating. Yeah. So there yeah. was multiple moments of that, but I had my speed limiter set, so I just kept it flat, and just that was all I could do. So I was being a good boy on the way home. To your first point, I always believe in divine intervention, and I feel, I feel, right that the reason why that. Google took you down those routes was because took you down those roads. <laughs> well, Jesus, was that it wanted you to spend more time in the car? Shay Renee, the Volkswagen, but it it was faster. Like really? the route, yeah, the routes that it took me were actually faster. I actually like because I did, I did get a little bit suspicious of where I was going. And uh, <laughs> well, you came back in one piece. It's not like they found you in the Copto exactly. rainforest or something like that. Exactly. So I did scroll out, and there was like a couple of spots where it was giving me the alternate route and going to put me back on the on the you know much more travelled road. And it was like up to like forty five minutes to an hour slower. I was like, well, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to stick to this because I'd like to get home. But it just, like I said, I had to dial the, I had to dial the eyes in. I concentrated more on the road in front of me than when I'm driving the go kart, because I just did not want to hit some unexpected pothole on these middle of bummer huh. tick nowhere roads in Melbourne. I was going to say, how'd you go in Perth? <laughs> I, was, I wasn't in, I wasn't in the Gulf. <laughs> I was in a big ass van. What was the economy like in the Gulf? Actually, not bad. I was surprised, um, especially because of the modifications that it's got on it. Um, I thought I was going to be chewing gas, but I actually, um, 
So I fueled up the night before I left in Melbourne, and I had to take a pretty pretty decent detour. Like it was probably about a hundred and ten k detour that I had to take to get in inland to um to go and get my my stuff from Kuwait. And I only had to fuel up like three quarters of a tank when I got to Neil, and then I've still I'm still driving around now on the tank that I wow. had at Neil. So I think. I think if I was like I'm, if I'm driving it smart, I'll get still like 700 k's to the tank. So that's not bad. That is not bad at all. That's better than I was expecting. Seven, be and that's what the motor on that's what uh, not a Porsche. Is that Porsche? Ah, uh, it's, it's something like that. Yep. With a turbo and all yep. that sort of stuff. Yep. To get 700 k's out of a tank with turbo. Yeah. That's pretty cool. If if I'm driving it like nicely, like if I keep it in in sport mode, race mode, I'm definitely not getting that much out of it. But if I drive it around on the city streets in eco mode and and don't be an idiot about it, I will get I'll get as good a mileage probably as as I got out of the Marina. You just want to hear the off-throttle pops and cracks. Oh, look, I'll get bored of it. I'm sure I will the novelty of it will wear off. Eventually. Especially with your neighbours, <laughs> no, probably yeah. Especially with your neighbours, no, I keep I keep me making sure that when I'm pulling into the into the streets nearby, I turn it into eco mode so it quietens everything down a little bit. We don't do what I did with my. Um, so Bianca and I went out on our first date a long time ago, and I had a VK Commodore uh, two hundred two, and I'd had um, three and a half inch headers and a straight pipe all the way through the car. Okay. And Bianca used, Bianca's parents used to live in Ross Trevor and the house was uphill. So I've dropped her off at 3 o'clock in the morning. I've turned the car and I've gone straight up the hill. It's dropped a gear because it's, you know, three-speed auto and all of a sudden it's just gone, blah, it's revving. Yeah, and yeah. this thing, all the lights in the street and it woke up my father-in-law as well. <laughs> <laughs> not, not a good impression. No, no. Needless to say, I didn't have the VK for that much longer, to be honest with you. But that was only because it was that's when the fuel crisis started to hit. I kind of wish I kept it now, though. Absolutely. It would be worth a pretty pretty penny now. Probably close to 50K. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Yeah. No. Speaking of 50K, people have asked... And wanted to hear this segment back. So, for our 50th episode, it's coming back. They are silly. No, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, how about they give me my intro? Oh, that's it. <laughs> now it's time for Jamie's Joke of the Week. Let's get ready to laugh our socks off. Now, because I'm still actually recovering, I've, I've recovered from the flu, but I have this this temperamental cough. So, if you do know CPR and I happen to drop dead in front of you... I guarantee you that if I do know CPR, these lips will not be making contact with yours. <laughs> Sorry, Bianca. Shay. Sorry. Shay, help me, please. Um, <laughs> Luckily, uh, we're pretty <clears throat> close to the Royal Adelaide Hospital here, so they should get to you in time. Well, when your car, yes, yeah. probably. Yeah. yeah, you drive me there. <laughs> yeah. All right. So... I used to be a programmer for autocorrect. They fried me for no reason. <laughs> Jeepers, creepers. <laughs> I'm going to cough. No bragging, but I made six figures last year. So they named me the worst employee at the toy factory. <laughs> <laughs> That's Don't. pretty low conversion. Right? <laughs> low conversion is my ability to not laugh and die. It's probably not... Oh, here's one for you. It's probably not safe for me to be driving right now. But hey... Bad breaks have never stopped me before. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> my God, I'm going to die. Sorry. The instructor in my self-defense class said that the most effective place to kick a man is near his knees. Personally, I think it's nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back, baby. Yeah. Oh, no, I've lost my screen. No, here we go. Um, my friend recently quit his job to pursue a career in miming. I haven't heard from him since. <laughs> oh my goodness! Well, could someone like it? Just where's the power? Where's the power station? Let me just turn it off. Oh, I'm going to be turned off in a minute with my voice here. What's going on? Um, okay. No, I won't do that one. Um, oh no, I won't. Even, oh, okay. It was nice knowing you, man. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I just learned the medical name for Viagra. My cock's flopping. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. Oh, my goodness gracious. You went there. You went I went there. there. I just about burst the brain vessel. <laughs> I 
feel like yeah, I've got one. <laughs> Happy fiftieth, man! I've, got, I've that. got one in in honor of our fiftieth <laughs> okay. fiftieth episode. <laughs> As I handed my dad his fiftieth birthday card, he looked at me with tears in his eyes and said, "You know, one would have been enough." <laughs> And sometimes, sometimes I think that that's how many episodes this podcast should have lasted, this radio show should have lasted. But here we are at fifty, oh. far out. It's been, a, it's been a journey. It's been a ride. Of course, of course. Yeah. Oh funny, man, my funny, god. Actually. All right. Oh man. How are we going with Le Mans, by the way? Before uh, we go. Yeah. So final little uh, Le Mans. Update, we've got two and a half hours left to go. Yep. The 51 Ferrari is still leading by 16 and a half seconds oh. from the number eight Toyota with the number two Cadillac uh, three minutes and a little bit behind. So still still three uh, three cars roughly in it um, with, with two and a half hours to go. Come on, boys. Come on, let's go. You know, they're building that gap. They are. They're, yeah, they're keeping it. They're keeping Lee, it. That's can, the main can, thing. I can feel it. This might be the night of Italy. In, in, you can keep it. Keep on hoping. Keep on hoping. <sighs> Two and a half hours to go. A Formula One race left to go, and uh, and, and they'll be they'll be home and home and host. It's going to happen, man. We're going to win the hundred. We're going to win the centenary. We hope you enjoyed the 50th issue of Negative Camp of the Motorsport Show. Um, don't know whether we'll come back after that, Joe. <laughs> there might be some stern words maybe, off air. Maybe that's why we went out at the gala, you know? <laughs> uh, but it was good. Uh, actually, to be honest, um, it was a good job for the, uh, for the station as well. They, had, they made a lot out of it. It helps the station. It helps us stay on air, maybe. And it helps everyone else as well. So uh, well done to the station for a great job. But we will be back in, what, a fortnight? Fortnight's time. A yep. fortnight's time. Um, and we will have plenty of motorsport to cover as usual. Maybe not have a joke anymore. We'll see how we go. And, uh, yeah, we'll speak to you soon. Good night. this podcast support it and sponsor today simply head to oscastnetwork.com for details